Good morning and welcome to my 12 hour readathon. So Corey and I take turns having a late day for work since we both work from home. Two days a week Corey takes Dren in the afternoon and they go have some father-son bonding time while I get to work a little bit later. And this week I decided to start the month of March off with a 12 hour readathon, spend the whole day reading to try to start my month off well because I have a really big list of books I want to read this month which is awesome and I'm excited about it but also a little bit stressful because I'm giving up an entire day of work to do this. Well not entirely because I do still have to film a video at some point today and edit that video so I still get to work a little bit. But yesterday I posted on my Instagram some polls for you guys to choose what I'm gonna read during this 12 hour readathon. So the first one, what I'm going to be physically reading, was to either finish this reread of Harry Potter book 7 or to start the Percy Jackson series. And surprisingly, Harry Potter won. I don't know why that surprised me. I have such a big Harry Potter fan base here, um, but so many people were excited for me to try the Percy Jackson series that I just assumed that that would win. A little bit over 400 pages left in this, so it generally takes me about an hour to read 50 pages. So that's like eight and a half hours of reading, which is not something I would do on your average day, but I have 12 hours to do it today. Then I also had you guys vote on which audiobook I would be listening to during my breaks throughout the day. And then there were none one, which again, I'm excited about because it was the shorter audiobook of the two choices. This one's only five and a half hours long, which means if I listen to it at 1.5 times speed, that it'll only take me three and a half hours to listen to it today, which is completely doable if I'm listening to it while I'm eating and getting ready to film and all that jazz. And then last, I just wanted something that would be quick and easy to read in case I need a break from Harry Potter and I just want something really fast. So I had either to continue Full Metal Al Alchemist or to begin Sandman, the comics. And that one was really, really close, but Sandman won, which I'm excited about because I've been wanting to start this comic for a long time. So my plan is to drink my coffee and get started on the day with a book. And then whenever I need a break, I will maybe get ready to film. You know, taking the day off work to read all day sounds really fun in theory, but it's actually been so much more stressful than I ever would have imagined. I'm really enjoying reading all morning long. It's very relaxing, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, there is a piece of me that's constantly just thinking, you have so much work to do right now, and you should be spending work hours working and your free time reading. I'm trying to convince myself it's okay to take a day off work to chill every now and then. And I'm making this into a video, so it's not like this can't be considered work, but I feel like I, I have a list of things that I could be doing instead, and I feel guilty having a me day. Isn't that ridiculous? Anyway, I am now on page 424 of Harry Potter, so I really haven't made nearly as much progress as I had wanted to up to this point, but Corey doesn't really have a lot of work to do today, and I'm not shut away in my office, so he has been so chatty, which has been great, but also I've not been reading as much. So my anxiety is winning out, and I'm gonna go ahead and go get ready to film and then film a video so that I feel a little bit better about myself, feel a little bit more productive, and then I'll come back and read some more. I'm really, really enjoying this reread. This is the Harry Potter book that I've reread the least of all of them, and so it's the one that I remember the least, so rereading it has been a lot of fun. Um, re remembering stuff that I had totally forgotten about the way the series concludes. It's also been interesting though because um, if you are not brand new to my channel, then you may know that I do Harry Potter videos where I do like a gush review talking about how great I love each book, and then I do a more critical review talking about the things that didn't quite work perfectly. And um, book seven so far is the book where I have the most material for my more critical look at the books because there's been a lot of things that have surprised me that they don't 
they're not working as well. Not just things that make the world not quite click perfectly, like the way the magic is set up and inconsistencies and stuff like that, but then also just this book has been filled with conveniences, which I haven't seen from the series since book two. Book two is basically the book of plot conveniences, and it's really the only one I remember being like that, but book seven has had so many of those as well, where it's just like, they're in the right place at the right time and the right thing happens and then they just have it, they have an epiphany like, oh, I suddenly know what I'm supposed to do even though I haven't known for months. Suddenly I've realized and then it's really easy. Like there's been so many of those and that really surprises me and I'm still loving this because it's still a great book, but I kind of didn't anticipate so many things like that popping up. But I'm gonna go ahead and put on my audiobook, get started with Agatha Christie, and uh, get ready to film, and then I'll see you then. took a lot longer than I actually anticipated because I had quite a few technical difficulties and kept, kept having to restart my recording and all that. Super fun. But I finally got it done. That video is out of the way. It's now time for me to pick up Dren. Um, my son always comes to our house for lunch and for his nap. But we get a little bit of playtime and a little bit of snuggles in midday. Um, so he'll be home. Well, I have to go pick him up now and uh, I'll get to read some during his nap and then after he's off again, then I'll check back in with how all that went. So I did, while I was getting ready to film, I did get to listen to a little bit of And Then There Were None. So I'm still in the very beginning. We're introduced to all the different characters. They've all been shipped off to the Oliver's house, I think is what they were calling them. I've already forgotten because one woman kept saying the wrong name and I'm pretty sure Oliver was the wrong name and there's something else. But they've all been shipped off to this like rich couple's um, island home and none of them really knows why. They've all been given different reasons for it. So I'm very curious about that and then none of them actually knows them and none of them have ever seen this couple and this couple isn't here upon everyone's arrival. So it's a very, very intriguing beginning and all of the characters are also very odd, very untrustworthy characters. So I'm definitely, definitely into the setup of this book. But I'll talk to you more after Dren has had his nap and is off. So I'm starting to panic a little bit. It is 4.05, which means the day's almost over. I listened to more of Agatha Christie and then there were none. Grabbed the physical copy so I didn't have to put in a image. I listened to more of that while I was fixing lunch for Dren and I and while I was eating lunch because he felt like watching a show while he ate. So I got a little bit farther into that and it's really good still. Nothing's really happened except that we're starting to get a little bit of background for why they're there and a little bit of background of how nefarious these characters are, but I'm still not very deep into the audiobook. Dren did take a long nap and I did read through the whole nap, so I am now on page 540, well actually I should have turned this page, 544. So I have just over 200 pages left, like 210 pages left, which is great progress in one day, but it's already 4 p.m. and I have no idea what time Corey and Dren are coming home. Sometimes they come home at five, sometimes they come home at eight. So I either have plenty of time to finish these two books or I don't have near enough time. Also, I haven't even started on Sandman and I still need to edit this video that I filmed today. So I'm going to, I think I'm gonna go ahead and read a little bit of Sandman, get started on this because once I read a little bit of it, I'll be more excited to pick it back up. And I do think that it's gonna be a really quick read and then I need to work on editing for a little while and then hopefully I can come back and finish Harry Potter. And while I do my cuts for my videos, I always listen to an audiobook. Obviously when I listen to the video back, I can't do that, but I'll get a little bit of audiobooking in as well. I always think I can read faster than I actually can. I always think, oh yeah, it's easy for me to finish this book in a day or whatever my goal is. And I never can. And I never lower my expectations. I just keep expecting myself to read faster than I do. Anyway, 
I should probably be reading. was a mess. My audio kept cutting out. I mentioned earlier that I was having issues. I think I said audio issues, technical issues. I was having issues when I was filming it and I thought I had solved all the issues. I thought that I had retaken every time the audio kept cutting out. I could see my sound waves because I record my audio on a proper microphone so that my videos sound nice and I watch the audio waves while I film because I'm super anxious about any of my files ever getting corrupted because my audacity is great and it's free and it's amazing, but it also crashes sometimes and I'm always anxious that it's gonna crash after I've filmed like a 20 minute video or longer. And it has on me more than once. And there were sections of my video where apparently I didn't catch that the mic was cutting out and it just, sections of my video. I'm using the external mic on my camera instead of the microphone that I used to film. You guys probably don't care about any of this, but it was a really frustrating thing to edit because it to make it sound even half decent, I had to do so much work on it. So now I'm flustered and frustrated. I spent more time on that video than I wanted to. And I usually do a lot of fun edits with my wrap ups, showing my goals along the way, putting in extra information on the screen. And I just don't have time to do that anymore because I spent so much time working on the sound files that I can't do any of my fun edits that I always do with my wrap ups. So it's gonna be a really bland wrap up that's not even good quality and I don't want to refilm it. So I'm just going to post it like that. And I just, ugh. but I did read some Sandman. <laughs> I am one chapter in, I think. I'm pretty sure when it has a break like that, that's a chapter break. So I read one chapter and then I started editing and now I'm just frustrated. Ugh. Okay, it's 522. So I spent, oh my gosh, I spent an hour and a half just trying to get the sound to work and doing your basic cuts and editing. No actual fun edits, just your most basic. Oh my gosh, that took me so long. Oh, that's right. I also I also did listen to some more of and then they were none while I was doing my my hard edits, my like cuts of of silence and people are dying. If you don't know the premise of this book, a lot of people die and people are dying and it, everybody's getting real anxious and it's, ugh, it's, it's fun so far. It's a fun book. I should probably go ahead and try to read a little bit more because Corey's probably going to be home soon. I don't think this is going to be a night that he stays out very late with Dren. So I'm definitely not going to be able to finish all three of these things that I planned on reading today. Like I thought I might could, but I should probably go ahead and try to get as far into these as I can. So I'm finishing out this vlog next day because I did continue reading that evening, but the sun had gone down by the time I was done reading and I just didn't think that it would be worth finishing the vlog. Sleepy, exhausted, those are the same word pretty much. Sleepy and frankly just really, I don't know, my brain was tired of reading and vlogging. So I decided to give myself a day. So next day, here's what I finished. I read up to the last hundred pages in Harry Potter book seven. So I had read 320-ish pages, uh, which is a lot. I mean, granted, I dedicated enough time of the day to this reading that I feel like I maybe could have finished it if I hadn't also plan to work <laughs> throughout the day, but I still feel really good about that. That's way more than I would have read on your average Friday. I got halfway through and then there were none by Agatha Christie and I read the first chapter of the first volume of Sandman. However, I have been continuing to read these books throughout the rest of today and uh, to give you a little bit of completion, I decided I'll go ahead and give you my final thoughts anyway, even though this is outside of the 12 hour 
marker, but I just figure it'll make the vlog feel more complete. So today I finished Harry Potter book seven and it was incredible. Like I said, this was the book that I remembered the least in the series from my many rereads. I just haven't reread this one recently. The last several times I've reread, I've only reread the first few and then quit. And this book was so emotional. During this reread of Harry Potter, I have not cried once until I got to this book, and then I cried a couple of times. There were so many emotional scenes and a few of the deaths that I remember. I don't remember being so emotional, and they were hard to read. Um, and, and the ending was much more satisfying than I remember it being as well. I'm not talking about the epilogue. I'm just talking about the final, how everything goes on. I was really happy with it, I definitely, I mean, some of you guys, if you've watched a lot of my Harry Potter videos, you know that my head canon doesn't match the book canon, which I think I'm going to make a whole video about why I have a different chosen one in my heart. But I have, I have a lot of videos that I want to make uh, after this reread is, I mean, now it's complete, but I have, I have a lot more videos that we need, we have things to discuss now that I'm finally done with this reread. But anyway, this has been an awesome experience. I, I, as sad as this book is and has, as emotional as this book is, it's also so satisfying and I had an amazing time rereading it. I also finished and then we were done, pretty much just right now. I had a lot of errands to run today. I was doing a lot of driving today, so I was listening the whole time I was driving, but then I was also reading the physical any chance that I got. It's so quick and easy to fly through because it's written in this unbelievably thrilling way. So I've already talked about the setup of it, but the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that there's this sort of Oh, you can see that I'm still wearing the same pajama shirt next day. Don't judge me. I guess it's kind of like a nursery rhyme or I didn't really catch what they called it, but some sort of some sort of like rhyme that um, they were all introduced to or reminded of when they got to the island. And it's about these nine little so soldier boys. And it talks about how one by one they're all being killed. And that is what the main thread of this book is. And as the people are getting killed off, their deaths are matching this rhyme and so it they're kind of following the the rhyme as well as the murders trying to figure out who on the island is killing everybody and like when one of they there are these um little glass soldier boys that are lined up at um at their at their house that they're staying at and one of them will go missing and so then they know someone is missing and it's just Ah, the whole set. I mean, it's an interesting premise anyway. Nine people on an island. One of them is a murderer. No one knows who. It's an interesting setup anyway, but the execution made it so suspenseful. I did call Who Done It, but it was more of an educated guess and not a, this was really obvious. The clues were really clear. It was just more me kind of being like, ah, it's probably this person, which did not take away any of the enjoyment because the reveal was still fantastic. I loved this book, dadgummit. I loved this book. It was so suspenseful and it was so exciting and fun. Oh, it was so much fun. I, I want to read a lot more Agatha Christie. This was my first Agatha Christie. I own two more of her books and I'll be reading them very soon. Sandman, unfortunately, I didn't get any farther into. I'm still only one chapter in. I think Daniel and I are going to do a buddy review slash predictions for the rest of the series. He asked me about it today and it sounds like a lot of fun, so I'm pretty sure we're going to do that. So you'll get some good Sandman content. Um, but my initial thoughts on it are it's weird. <laughs> it's a really weird beginning, but it's also such an interesting idea. So I'm excited to keep reading. I do, I am having a hard time. I'm pretty sure this is considered a comic. I've heard some people call it a graphic novel though, and I'm not entirely sure how to tell which one it is, but I have read some manga and I've gotten used to manga formatting. And this has been a bit of a challenge for me to wrap my head around because the the formatting of this is much more chaotic. The manga formatting is, is very straightforward and clear. So I, I have a little bit of an adjustment happening, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm I'm pretty sure I'm there now. I feel comfortable with it or a lot more comfortable. Um, I think I'm just gonna, if I can manage to edit this whole thing tonight, I think I'm going to try to make this my weekly reading vlog, put it up at the same time as what I would normally do a regular reading vlog. So because I'm going to do it, I, I'm gonna handle it like that, I guess we'll transition into the weekly unboxing things that people have sent me this week. So if you're not interested in watching me receive a bunch of books, 
Thanks for joining me for this 12 hour readathon. I had a lot of fun with it and I may try to do it again next month because it was a really good way to start out my month. But thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed doing it. And um, bye. Hi everyone that stayed. Here's some boxes that were sent to me. Actually, first thing I'm gonna mention is uh, this planner and journal that I got. I've actually been in the market for a planner and I've been trying to find one uh, for about a week now or about a week before they reached out to me because I'm having trouble keeping up or rather keeping track of all my audiobooks and critique work that I'm doing for authors and stuff like that. I'm trying to schedule it all and I've been doing it in a bit of a disorganized way and so I really just wanted to get a planner to have a little bit more organization to my life because I'm an organization freak and the planner that I have been using wasn't great and also I just ran out of pages because I'm booking a little bit too far in advance at this point. So then this company reached out to me and said, hey, you want a free planner? And of course I said yes. And they also wanted me to get a journal too, so I got one from my mom. And because it's a gift, they put it in this nice gift box, which she'll never see because I'm gonna show it to you. That's funny. It says personalized journal. Apparently, the, I, I was supposed to put her name on it, but apparently I did it wrong, so it doesn't have her name on it now. But I'll give you some quick images of these. These are uh, Christian-based, so they have scripture in them. They are, I don't know, I really like them. I like the spacing and they're perfect amount of organization for me because now I have a month overview, which is what I really need for my critique work. But then I also have uh, the day by day, which is also very important for me. So it's basically exactly what I've been looking for. Oh yeah, and I have a promo code or a discount. I have a discount code in the description so that you can get a discount too. Onto the boxes. Oh, nice, Terry Pratchett. So Terry Pratchett, I've been meaning to read for a minute and uh, I, you know, I haven't even checked with my library to see if they have any Terry Pratchett because I just get sent so many books. So there's always books to read, but this is going on my shelf of books that I plan to read very soon. I might put it on a poll for a buddy read as well. Cause I always get to those books faster. Wow. Oh yeah. Okay, so as soon as I did my Harry, uh, no, not Harry Potter, my Percy Jackson video where Percy Jackson won um, and now I'm going to be reading at least the first book, but I reckon I'm going to enjoy the series. Um, this amazing subscriber, Lindsay, reached out to me and said, hey, I have an extra set. You want them? And of course I do. I had actually already put a hold at the library to get the first Percy Jackson book. By the time she messaged me, I had already gone on my library website and put a hold on it, but there were already several people on the wait list, and so I didn't know how soon I was gonna get it. And now I can binge the series if I want. I think I'm gonna, um, if you don't know, Percy Jackson is on my to be read list for books that I'm gonna read in March. And I think I'm gonna wait until close to the middle or the end of the month to read book one. That way, if I love it, I can just plow through the series and not really have to worry about, oh, but I have other books on my TBR that I should be reading. Wow, that was so sweet. Okay, so wow, losing the sun fast. So War of the Realms, Conquests and Conquisitions. Um, so this author, this is a self-pub book that the author emailed me about. I definitely wanna read it. Let me tell you a little bit about it. When the fallen angels were banished, that wasn't the end of the war. It was only the beginning. Far from over, the battle now expands to the worlds of the physical realm and the entire galaxy is the prize. So this looks really good and I'm gonna read it. But he also sent me a letter letting me know that he is a combat veteran and he tried to put some reality in his book, but then he was also talking about my adoption and it was a really sweet letter and I very much appreciate that. Ooh, The Winter King. It takes a remarkable writer to make an old story as fresh and compelling as the first time we heard it. With The Winter King, the first volume of this magnificent Warlord Chronicles, Bernard Cornwell unveils the story he was born to write, a brilliant retelling of the mythic saga King Arthur. I know, I know Arthur, Arthurian fantasy. It's not a new thing. I never get tired. I won't get tired. Oh, sorry, there was a note in this one and I didn't see it at first. Hi Murphy from Frank. I will not say your full name just in case you don't want it on camera. Arthurian legend is a historical fiction. It checks a lot of boxes. First of three, hope you enjoy. I'm sure I will. Oh, Shannon, Shannon McGuire, Shannon, Shannon, how do you say her name? I've read her, two of her wayward series books. I know you've been trying to get into detective novels. I thought you might like some more fantasy based ones. It's a very hit or miss genre, but hopefully these will hit for you from Pearl.
Thank you, Pearl. That's really considerate. I have read, I'm pretty sure, isn't this the Wayward author? And also she wrote um, a book that I really loved and I can't think of the name of. The mermaid one that I love. The Complete Arrows Trilogy. I've never heard of this. Mercedes Lackey's debut trilogy tells the story of Talia, a daughter for the repressive Hunterfolk who is chosen by the immor by who is chosen by the immortal companion Roland to become one of the legendary heralds of Valdemar. Companions like Roland are mystical horse-like beings with powers beyond imagining, including the power to sense an awakening potential for special talents of the mind and certain young men and women like Talia. Ooh, that sounds quite interesting and odd. Look at these covers. I just I, I've never seen anything like it. Another Drennan book! For your son, I heard on a recent video he liked tigers. They are my favorite animal and I thought he might like this. Just a few nice pictures and kid-friendly facts. Hope he likes it from Jess. Thank you, Jess. He will love this. He's obsessed with tigers. Oh my gosh, he's gonna think this is the coolest thing ever. Thank you, Jess. Hey, Murphy, this isn't my favorite culture novel. What? This isn't my favorite culture novel, but it is the one I started with. Alien concept concepts often aren't explained directly, but you can be, but can be worked out from context. So just try to go with it, Jack. Cool. I've never heard of a culture novel. Is that the series probably? Since it's written right there, I bet it's the series. This is I, very new to me. Let's learn a little bit about it. The culture. A human machine, Cybonic Society, has thrown up many great game players, and one of the greatest is a name I can't pronounce. The player of the games, master of every board, computer, and strategy. I'm into it. I'm 100% into it. I. That's going on my soon to read shelf. I don't even know anything more about it. I want it. Hi Murphy, a little while ago I asked on Twitter if you had read this book and you said no. I think it's a fun read even though it's not the most advanced read ever. Hope you like it, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. One dragon egg holds the key to the future. Once a slave, Kale is given the, the unexpected opportunity to become a servant of Paladin. Yet this young girl has much to learn about the difference between slavery and service. So Aragon is a series that I grew up reading and absolutely adored in high school. And I feel like I have been waiting for my next dragon book that I love. And I've recently read books like Rage of Dragons and others like that. But those books, like I'm waiting for a book that has a strong focus on dragons like Aragon did. And I recently read Dragon Rider, and I thought it would be it, but it, it wasn't the book for me. So I have a dragon book on my TBR this month. No way. I'm going to finish what I'm saying, and then I'm going to lose my mind. I have a dragon book on my TBR this month that I'm really excited to read because I'm looking for my next dragon series, and this looks like it would be really good too, so I am excited to read it. Thank you so much. I, I, I will read it very soon. Also, someone sent me a freaking wand! Dear Murphy, I want to thank you for agreeing to do a review of my book and for showing it in your unboxing video. As a thank you, I'm sending you one of the wands I make. Thank you so much, M.T. Fisher. Oh my goodness, I want to see it. I want to see it. Should I show you guys first? Would it be selfish of me if I looked first? <sighs> What? Tell me whose wand do you think this looks like? I know it's not actually a character's wand. Ooh, I like the little wood. But tell me who, who should I pretend this wand belongs to? I have Hermione's wand, but ever since I bought it, I have regretted buying Hermione's wand because I really want Greyback's wand because his wand is so cool looking. So I might pretend that this is great. Last package. No note. Kylie. The dead sleep in the wilderness. Ooh. Gross talk. Crosswalk pushes the modern culture of social media and continues contentively to hilarious and terrifying extremes as one young woman abruptly finds herself with more con connectivity than she ever desired, placing her privacy to say nothing of her patience and possibly her sanity at risk. Ooh, book girl. And the suicidal mime. Oh my. A Fire Upon the Deep. This won a Hugo Award. A Space Saga, Awesome in Conception. And a riveting novel of conflict, love, loss, and survival. My camera's struggling with the sun going down. Archangel. Oh, she looks sad. Oh, this one also won award. William Crawford Award for the Achievement in Fantasy. Volume 1 in what looks to be a graphic, I mean a manga, and it is. 
Yotosuba moved with Daddy to a new house from our old house way over there. And moving's fun because people wave. Ha, <laughs> cute. So this is probably like a middle grade manga, which I've never read, but now I will. Thank you to whoever, whoever sent a load of books. And thank you to everyone that sent books. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, readathon thingy that I did. I had a lot of fun, even though I am exhausted from reading, but it was an awesome way to start out my month and a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you again to everybody that always sends me stuff. Oh my goodness. Be sure to chat with me more in the comments about anything that you saw here and you want to chat more about. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.